The NASCAR Winston Cup Series returns here on JRTV as we're here for race number 16 of the 2002 Winston Cup Series season. It is the Sirius Satellite Radio 400 at the Michigan International Speedway. I'm Joe Rakowski here to bring, bring you flag-to-flag -flag coverage of this midway race in the Winston Cup Series season here at Michigan. Always one of the better races we've seen this season with fast speeds at Michigan and a wide racetrack leading to a lot of very close racing and a lot of great finishes over the years here at Michigan. Last season, it was a last lap pass with Brett Sear in the 25 just edging out the one of Anthony Hernandez, passing him and going into turns three and four on the last lap. We'll see if something just like that can happen here today at Michigan. Michigan, or will be someone dominating like one of the Roush cars who start inside the top five here today. Keyshawn Richardson and the 97 of Zach Delello share the front row for Roush Racing. Their other two teammates, Jordan Stout and Matthew Burnett, start in fourth and ninth, respectively. Roush Racing has found some speed so far this season. When it looked like at the, at the beginning of the season, it was going to be a Richard Childress Racing walk away. Roush has come alive, especially Keyshawn Richardson has nearly a 200 point advantage over the 31 of Conrad Evans, but don't let that fool you because it was around this point in the season last season where Chris Jericho's major points lead started to dwindle, and it was this race last season where Brett Sierra got the points lead for the first time in a long time. So we'll see if Keyshawn Richardson can hold his, this momentum through the summer months, or does someone from RCR or a different team come alive to challenge? We'll find out here at Michigan as after today, we are midway through the 2002 Winston Cup Series season. Also watch for the Hendrick cars here today. They start decently well. Justin Zidell, the homegrown hero here at Michigan, starts in seventh place. Keegan Thompson starts inside the top ten on his birthday weekend, looking for something good to happen for that Hendrick team here today. Brett Sierra starts just inside the top 20. Jay Reno is set to start inside the top 20 in 16th, but failed inspection number 40. It will start all the way back in 42nd here today at Michigan. And also watch for the DEI cars. Two of them did not look fast at all in qualifying. Hernandez and Eli Bright both start outside the top 20, but Lathan Strickland found some speed to qualify in 7th. He'll start 6th there today in the number 15 because the number 19 of Nolan Larch is set to start in 3rd place, but the 19 failed post-qualifying inspection, so it goes from 3rd all the way back to 40. First, we'll see what Lawrence can do in that number 19 coming from the back of the field. Once again, this is a track, though, where a lot of passes can happen with how wide it is. You can make some big moves uh, made throughout these 40 laps we're going to run here at Michigan. And what a beautiful day it is as we go to our Ford Fast Facts for the Michigan International Speedway. Clear skies. There are some clouds in the in the sky, but mostly clear sunny skies here today at Michigan. 74 degrees is the temperature. Three miles an hour of wind in the southeast direction and no chance of rain here today at Michigan. This will be a 40 lap race, 80 miles in length. The fuel window, 21 to 24 laps. They go just past the midpoint. Last season in this race, we saw a whole variety of strategies. Some people tried to undercut. That didn't work. Some people pit right in the middle. Some drivers tried an overcut. We'll see which one works out. And also, don't forget that we saw that pit lane incident leaving pit road in 2000, here, which caused a yellow flag. So if something like that happens again this season, could maybe staying out longer strap some people a lap down. And then the track facts here at the Michigan National Speedway. The track is two miles in length with 18 degrees of banking in the turns, 12 degrees on the front straightaway, and 5 degrees on the back straightaway. This track was built in 1968 and held its first race here in the Winston Cup Series in 1981. And watch for Hendrick Motorsports here today. They've won five of the last seven races here at Michigan, including the last three with three different drivers. And the winningest driver here at Michigan is Dan Bandon. He's won seven times and swept the races here in 1989, back when Michigan had two races on the Winston Cup Series schedule. We'll see if someone can try and become the new Dan Bandon here today at Michigan. Justin Zidell and Brett Sierra are the only two drivers in the field that have won races before here at Michigan. And as mentioned, Zidell starts in seventh today. Sierra starts just inside the top 20. Both drivers looking for... Hendrick's first win of the 2002 season. Hard to believe that considering we had Keegan Thompson win multiple races last season. Brett Sierra going to tear in the summer stretch. So far, no Hendrick car has won a race this season. Can that change at Michigan? They've been strong here as of recent history. We'll see who gets it done though at Michigan. At the front, it is a Roush affair. Three of the top four spots belong to Roush and the top five belongs to Roush Racing and Richard Childress Racing. We'll see if one of those two teams can go to victory lanes. We'll get on track to get the words to fire the engines up. Drivers, start your engines! Forty-two. 
Wendons fire up for the 16th race of the Winston Cup Series season. And back on the outside of the second row is number six of Georgetown, who's been on fire as of late. Ran really well at Texas, won the Lowe's first through the World 600. Ran very well at Poconos, while the last three races have been stout for Jordan Stout. We'll see if he can continue that momentum this number six, trying to get there near his teammates up in the point standings. A few rows back, number 24, Justin Zidell, won this race two seasons ago in 2000. It was his first ever Winston Cup Series victory. Since then, he never won a race in 2001, still hasn't won in 2002. In fact, the whole of Hendrick hasn't won so far this season. Can they find a way to find that magic from 2000 back here in 2002? Get Hendrick their first victory of the season across all four cars. Just that out could be the one to watch in this race for Hendrick Motorsports. And then a few rows behind him is Mathis Wilson, the number 20 winner at Pocono. His first win of the season. They had been looking for that first win throughout Pocono, and now they got it. Could the floodgates open for more victories? Wells, so, so strong last summer, could be just as strong this summer and potentially gain on the front four and points. He's moved up to fifth in the points after his spoken a win. And looking for some more, he's looking to go back to back here at Michigan. We'll see if he get down that number 20, who starts just outside the top 10. At the front of the field, Roush Racing and Richard Childress Racing. Keyshawn Richardson, the points leader, is the pole leader for today's race. Kukulon will be right behind him in third to his outside, Zach DeLello, as we're coming down the front stretch. 40 laps at Michigan are underway for the Sirius Satellite Radio 400. Already fanning out three wide. Keyshawn Merchant tried to hold the lead but couldn't. It's a championship rival. Second of the points. Comrade Evans to the inside trying to grab the lead away as they come off turn number four for the first time. There you can see the pack scattering around. Evans going to deny Richardson to lead the first lap. The 31 will do it for five bonus points right there. Burnett right behind him pushing him through trying to move to second himself. That was a very chaotic start. Some cars are drifting up through three and four. Others drift up through one and two this time as everyone tries to filter around this racetrack, this two mile racetrack, trying to keep it clean. As they race off two, here comes Burnett looking low and Evans down the back straight away. But Burnett, no drafting help. The 31 stays clear. Richardson up top. Here comes Evans' teammate Atkins. They're three wide for fifth. Evan Hunter with his teammate Tim Gary making the big moves through the field on lap number two. Evan Hunter moves low on Jericho and Luke Rainey as they all scatter around on the front stretch. Evans leads lap two. It's getting chaotic back there around, you know, 10th place. They're three by three. Everyone trying to move forward as best they can. Look at Anthony Hernandez being aggressive. Yepes right to his outside. Almost contact between those two. They sort it out. Now Yepes up top three wide. Brett Sierra moving low with Eli right behind him. Hernandez moved up inside the top 10 nicely. As up here, Richardson battles for second place with teammate Burnett, but can't get it. Jericho's through to fourth, getting by that number 30 of Atkins, who's kicked back to fifth. Then teammates battle for sixth. In the back here is a log jam, four wide off turn number four. Can they sort up before a crash happens? Yeah, I just don't know if four wide's gonna work here. So Eli Bryce's best interest would be to back out. He does do that, gets behind. Mitchell Collins and number 12. There's the pack steaming off into turn one. Laura Chung up the racetrack. Roberto Crown Jr. to her inside. And how about Benny Lynn? His one-off start for number 67 this season. Lynn moving up on the inside with help from Zachary Fitzwater Sr. They're trying to break their way inside the top 10. This is pandemonium back just outside the top 10. I mean, they are three by three. Look at this back here. Luke Brady, Jordan Stout, Samet Osgin, Jordan Edwards. They're all coming together off turn number four. So far, still clean, but this is so crazy. Burnett up front is going for the lead. As back here, Hunter Reed forces it four wide. Oscar will back on the number 26. Idell and Strickland have fallen back here. I mean, this is chaos early on. Burnett had a look at Evans, but couldn't make it work. Keyshawn Richardson trying to move to second place by Burnett. And here comes last season's champion, Chris Jericho, moving on the 18. He'll try to get some spots from those Roush guys. Oh, but he goes up the racetrack in three and four. Here comes Evans' teammate Atkins to the end on the number 30. Evan Hunter with him in the 36. Then comes Hunter's teammate Tim Gary. They battle for every spot but the race lead. Evans pulls away at every lap so far from third starting, or excuse me, from fifth starting spot. Richardson for second, trying to get back towards the front. Remember, he started on pulling this race. Gary moved three wide on two of his kind of teammates. Hunter is his teammate. Jericho's his aligned teammate. 
Made that move stick on the bottom of the racetrack. Atkins right by Burnett. Now looks low for third place. At the moment, still just Roush and Richard Schultz racing out the front. But ME2 coming to the front with Tim Gary moving low. Hunter up the racetrack with Hernandez to his inside. But Hunter gets the runoff four and might get the draft from teammate Tim Gary to make it work. But now Gary moves low because he has his sight set on Atkins. Now look at the run he had right there down the front stretch off into one. And up front, Richardson hunting down Evans. Jericho three wide on Anthony Hernandez and Evan Hunter. A big move through one and two, trying to make it stick on the bottom of the racetrack. And we'll do it. A two for one deal for last season's champion. Big move out of Chris Jericho right there to get those spots. But Hernandez coming back using the draft. And up front, the top three, they come together with Evans leading. But the Roush guys got the draft and have the horsepower down the straightaways. This is one of those racetracks where everything matters. Motor, downforce, you know, chassis. Everything matters at a track like Michigan, and that's why these top three are the top three. They've been some of the three best this season across every type of track. As Evans continues to lead, he has uh, he has battles from behind with Matthew Burnett and Keyshawn Richardson coming up, but at the moment, those two keep battling themselves, and they can't find a way to gain on that Richard Children's Racing Chevrolet. Behind them, Evan Hunter under attack from Brett Sierra in the 25. 200 cars currently inside the top 10. They're Keegan Thompson and Brett Sierra. Sierra, remember, won this race last season and he last lap passed that number one car, Anthony Hernandez. Trying to get back to victory lane for the first time since last season. Laura Chung finished inside the top three at Pocono and maybe that has started a momentum swing for this number nine team as Chung is just inside the top 10 currently in 12th place and looks like so far at the moment she started back outside the top 20. She has a pretty sporty race car. And right behind her, Roberto Crown Jr., Nathan Baird. Baird, this could be a big day for him if he can stay up here because he is trying to battle to get inside the top 35 in owner's points, and he's just outside of it. So a good day here could be really big for him. He's now going to be middle of three because Mathis Wells makes the move to the end on the number 20. Roberto Crown Jr. got shoved out in the 43. And back up to the front, they are once again tightening up. Evans has the lead. Keyshawn Richardson with the draft. Now looking for it in the turn one. Evans led the first nine laps, but not, might not lead the tenth lap because it's the points leader and pulls here. Keyshawn Richardson moving low, trying to get his first lap lead of the day. Richardson clears, he slides up right in front of Evans, but the third one is a nice draft now. So he's looking for a crossover. He does, back to the inside for Evans. Does not want to let that 99 get any bonus points, and for good reason. Oh, but Richardson so good off the top of turn number four, it's gonna be a drag race. Richardson will lead lap number 10, five bonus points, his first lap of the day. He might clear Evans into one right here. Evans trying to hang his fender to the inside of the quarter panel. Jericho three wide for fourth, puts Burnett in the middle, Gary up top. Now, Evans has teammate Atkins to push him up for the lead, but Atkins makes the move for himself. Down to the inside for second place on Conrad Evans. The 31 trying to get down low, but can't. And Jericho slides up the track. He's just trying to take that line away from Burnett. So far, the outside of turn four has looked better than the inside. And Gary got a nice run. He'll look three wide down the front stretch. And these three battling like this has brought Keegan Thompson back into it. The number five car. The front seven have gone away. Evans is clear in second now. Now Hunter, Chung, and Wells try to run down those front seven. Jordan Stout moving back through the field. Kukulon trying to come back. Justin Zidell had fallen back in the number 24. Here he is moving back up. DeLello start outside the front row. He's trying to get back up here. And Luke Rennie has two top tens and his two Michigan starts. He's trying to keep that streak alive with this number 88 car, but so far it's not looking too great. He goes with the race track. Here comes Lathan Strickland with a nice run to the inside. Strickland got a good run in the 15, and behind him is teammate Eli Bright up top. In fact, you know, th that throwback paint scheme that, he's, uh, that he currently has on with. Jeff Bright, his father's 1987 winning paint scheme. Jeff Bright won this race in 1987 in route to that championship. So, might be the reason why DEI decided to run it here. And so far, Eli Bright has it inside the top 20, but wants it to obviously be a little bit higher than where he is right now as he's trying to battle up through the field. Back up to the front for the lead. It's on again. The top two in the championship going at it with another driver inside the top five in points just behind them. Evans, Richardson, and Atkins. Three of the best so far this season. Going at it with Evans and Atkins. The RCR teammates pushing their way on the inside to get back by Keyshawn Richardson. And Evans gets the lead back. But here comes Atkins with a nice run into one. But so far stays in line with his teammate. Oh, uh, now he's going to look low. Temptation was there. He's going to take it. 
Second year driver looking for his first ever Winston Cup Series win. Moves low to the inside of Evans and those two teammates drag race down the backstretch with Evans getting help from his championship rival Keyshawn Richardson on the outside. I think Evans may have actually gotten into the wall entering the corner. I think he tried to get a great arc in but in fact hit the wall. And though these three right here being stacked up like they were, Matthew Burnett got a great run and now makes it a four car race with a Roush car on the outside, Roush car on the inside, two RCR cars leading the way on the outside and the inside. Evans continues to lead in the 31, Atkins' his teammate down low, and then two Roush cars right behind them, and it's like we're at a, a super speedway right here. So we're going to go three wide off turn number two. Matthew Burnett forcing to the inside, but thinks better of it. Atkins, though, still can't get by his teammate Evans, who fights hard with the drift from Richardson down the back straightaway. This is great stuff at Michigan. These four battling like they are. Here comes fifth on back to close in. Mathis Wells, Lord Chung beating and banging off turn number four. The number nine, the number 20. Evans will lead that lap and might clear Atkins. The 30 has no help behind. Evans has all the help from Keyshawn Richardson. 31 with a big push into turn one and is clear of the pack behind. 31 looks stout. Remember, started fifth in this race. He's led the most laps so far. Richardson led for a few, but... Evans has been out front every other one that Richardson did not lead. Now the bout for third, fourth, fifth in all these positions. Tim Gary looks three wide, puts Richardson up top, and Burnett in the middle. Here comes another Roush car. Jordan Stout, a big run to the inside, has to lift because he almost got into Keegan Thompson. That car got very tough at the racetrack, and here comes Thompson. A nice run, that number five, looking for a way to go with it. He's going to push Richardson by Gary. Now split to the middle to get down in front of Gary and look for a pass on Richardson and Burnett both. Great move by the 2000 runner-up for the championship. Three wide back here. Kukulon trying to stop what has been a dismal stretch of races. He entered Talladega as the points leader over Keyshawn Richardson. But since that Talladega race, he's fallen outside the top five in points and looking for a way to get back up there in that championship conversation. He moves low on Evan Hunter. Might move low on the points leader Keyshawn Richardson. As Stout moves three wide. Puts Gary in the middle. Stout all the way to the bottom. And here comes Kukulon. Nice run. Gary crowding Richardson up the racetrack, almost making contact with the 99. Close racing for the championship points leader as Richardson is up top three into turn number one. Oh, it's still close. Burnett moving for second on Atkins. Keegan Thompson right behind them in the number five. There's Burnett side by side with Atkins. The 30 gaining the advantage with the draft from the five and the 31 both. Burnett will make it stick on the bottom of three and four. Atkins up the track, has his hands full with Keegan Thompson, and now Jordan's down to number six. Kukulon coming back, Nathan Baird moving up in the 22, up inside the top 10, and this could be a really good point today for Nathan Baird for Bill Davis Racing. Lord Shung moving out three wide in the nine. And Richardson went from bound for the lead. He's now outside the top 10. And still, cars filtering around. That's how fast it can turn here at Michigan. Went from bound for the lead to not even close as Atkins stays clear in second. New Roush car up there to balance. Jordan's down to number six. Here's three wide racing. Mathis Wells being aggressive with the number 20. And as we come around to complete the 19th lap, the big question here is, what's the pinch charge going to be? Last season we saw Zarek and Fitzwater Sr. from a top three spot undercut. Pit sooner than anyone, but it didn't work. He lost position. The drivers who came in in the middle actually gained the most ground. So we'll have to see, does anyone dare try the undercut here today? We're coming on a complete 20th lap, and we'll be halfway through with the Sirius Satellite Radio 400. We've had two leaders to this point, Keyshawn Richardson and Conrad Evans, who's had the most laps so far today. Jordan Stout, the new second place man for Roush. Burnett now third, and three wide for fourth. Kukulon down low, Thompson in the middle, and Atkins up top. They sort that three wide back to two wide. Stout with the run. Into one for the lead. Matthew Burnett lower. Three wide. And this is right when pit stops are going to be starting. Evans backs out. Now the Roush guys go out. Burnett on the inside. Stout on the outside. Side by side for the lead. Down the back straight away. Door to door. Here comes Thompson in third place. Remember, Hendrick really would love a win here at Michigan. They've been so strong in the recent history. No one of the front runners coming in, and we have an RCR three wide moment. Evans is up top, Atkins is in the middle, down low it's Kukulon. At the stripe, Jordan Stout will lead that lap in the number six. So Stout credit with that one. Burnett still on the inside. Thompson 
looking even lower than number five. Into turn 22. Can he force a three wide? He couldn't. He'll back out, though. Just stay behind them for now. But pit stops are looming. Down the back straightaway, look at this pack of cars. This is all of the front ten or so battling at the front of the field. And it looks like some of the leaders might be making the move in this time. Evans from the outside trying to cut in. Here we go. Burnett, Thompson, Baird, Wells, Evans, DeLello, and Zidell coming into pit lane. Strickland, Richardson, the points leader. Luke Reynolds win. There's Jay Renner on field inspection. Right behind, I think that's Sarah Kirchner, Samet Oskin, Lawrence, who also failed inspection. And you see Jack Haas is there. Jimmy Stimmer Jr., Nathan Stapleton. There's Jason Albert. He had really fallen off. So Jordan Stout still the leader. Atkins right behind him. Do they come in this time or do they stay out even longer? Coming to complete the 23rd lap. Kukulon looks like he's thinking about staying out while most of the leaders are thinking about coming in. Kukulon will stay out. He'll inherit the lead. And he is so far the only one on this strategy. Kukulon on an island of his own. He'll lead the 23rd lap. And now watch. In 2000, we saw cars wreck leaving pit road. Here's two cars side by side. Wells gives. Here's two more side by side. DeLello and Luke Rainey trying to sort it out. Still side by side. DeLello will give. Richardson, Osgin up the racetrack. But I think they sorted it out. But Richardson slowed. He'll lose time with Osgin. That was a bad, bad sequence for that 99. Reed and Mills are up to speed. I think they had pitted a lap sooner than those front runners. First car off pit road was that man, Matthew Burnett. Kukulon in, last car to pit. Stout and Atkins side by side leaving pit road. Will they sort it out? They're going to hit a little. Now trying to get up to speed. Hunter and is right behind getting slowed up. Atkins will beat the six off, but... Where is the 17 to Matthew Burnett at? Remember, he came in sooner. Nathan Barrett right behind him in the 22. Those four that pitted sooner, they're going to be one, two, three, four. Burnett, Baird, Thompson, and then Wells. Caution is out. Reckon one. Noah Clifton and Mitchell Collins. Also involved, that car is Nolan Lawrence. The yellow is out, and we have Richardson back in pit road with Osgin. Obviously an issue there. Kukulon will leave and he'll be the race leader. That is big for Sebastian Kukulon. He's going to be the leader. And the Richardson, the point is going to be stuck a lap down here. Obviously that, that contact he had leaving pair with the 26. Both came back in. There must have been enough contact where they thought they were going to have an issue with a tire rub or something. They both came back in and now they're going to be stuck a lap down. And how big is that for Sebastian Kukulon? That strategy is going to work out. Is everyone, I, I think the, uh, yeah, the, the pace car and stuff there is a huge mess as everyone's trying to sort it out, but it's going to be Kukulon with the lead. With 15 to go. Car number 29 could get back in the championship fight just like that. It's not good for Richardson at all. That number 99 stuck down and lapped down in 39th. Not good. else trying to sort out where, where they have to be but looks like it was a pretty big crash three cars involved Nolan Lawrence Noah Clifton and Mitchell Collins all involved in the first caution and the first accident here in the Sirius Satellite Radio 400 at Michigan we'll go check out what happened this is just like we had mentioned in the 2000 season two cars racing side by side leaving pit road ended in a terrible crash for Brandon Beal well here two cars side by side leaving pit road Mitchell Collins on the inside Jericho's ahead on the outside but Collins gasses up trying to get by him and they're going to make contact not enough room and Collins is going to go up the racetrack and Noah Clifton has nowhere to go but into the number 12 Collins and Lawrence with Clifton all hit hard up into the outside concrete. And you have to believe all three of those cars are going to be done for the day for Nolan Lawrence. That's a tough break. He was set to start in third, but failed inspection after qualifying. Set himself back there. Didn't have the track position. And when you don't have the track position, you get involved in stuff like that. And that's the reason. Noah Clifton also involved. Not good for his points. And Mitchell Collins was trying to gain some momentum. That number 12 is junk and done. We'll go take a look at this wreck in full speed. Here is one more view leaving pit row with Mitchell Collins and Chris Jericho. And yeah. It's just, there's really no one to blame in that. There's just not enough room leaving pit road for something like that. And unfortunately for the second time in three Michigan races, it's caused a crash and taking out some drivers that had nothing to do with it. But 
what a big break it was for this number 29 while Sebastian Kukulan he stayed out longer than anyone on the racetrack and he leaves pit road the rest of the field taking the yellow had to slow down Kukulan leaves pit road and enters the track in first place can the Richard Jones racing driver hold on try and get himself back into the championship fight we'll restart with about 10 laps to go here at Michigan The restart will come with 11 laps of racing to go here at Michigan. A few cars on the tail end of the lead lap before we get the green flag. And before we get to that green flag, our advanced top parts question of the week from last week at Pocono. We had asked which of the turns at Pocono is the most important. And with 54% of the vote, turn three was deemed the most important part of that race track. Probably because of how uh, how long that turn is and how it leads to such a long straightaway, the longest straightaway on the uh, race track. For this week's Advanced Auto Parts question of the week, it's about how many points the race winner gets at the end of the day. Currently, they get a base 175 points, but obviously they'll get five bonus points for in a lap, so they get 180. The question is, how many points should the race winner receive in a Winston Cup Series race? Should it stay the same at 175 with the five points for 180? Should it be up to 190, up to 200? Or maybe should it be more than 200? Enter your results, and we'll, we'll talk about which of the results won in two weeks' time, as we have an off week next week, but two weeks' time at the New Hampshire International Speedway. Three cars from the garage and done from that crash. They are Nolan Lawrence, Noah Clifton, and Mitchell Collins. Four cars are on the tail end of the lead lap in front of the leaders. B.P. Rose and Jason Albert, then Keyshawn Richardson, the points there, and Samet Osgin. They'll obviously bound for spots, but they could mess up this battle for the win. At the front, it's Kukulon, then Burnett. Nathan Baird with a great run up in third. Keegan Thompson looking for Hendricks first of the season in fourth. Wells is fifth. Atkins in sixth. Stout seventh. Hernandez eighth. Hunter ninth. And Lord Chung up inside the top ten again as we come back down to the green flag. 11 laps to go at Michigan. Kukulon jumped high in the 29. That's not great. Burnett has the inside lane and everyone else shuffling around in front of Kukulon. That's going to be big for Burnett on the inside. Matthew Burnett trying to get the lead away from Kukulon. Nathan Baird also on the inside. He's trying to get up the lead and get his first lap sled of the day. Mathis Wells going for two in a row. He's up here in the number 20. Off two. They all scatter around three wide on the lap cars. Down the back straight away. Big move out of Burnett. Nathan Baird waiting right there. Like waiting for his a way to make this move. Mathis Wells will go four wide. This number 20. Big move on Baird. Wells up to second. Now hunting for the lead off four. Mathis Wells trying to go back to back. He's down to the inside. Ten laps to go. Burnett led that lap, but Mathis Wells has a preferred lane to turn one. Mathis Wells is moving. Winner at Pocono looking to go back to back. Justin Atkins in the number 30. Looking for his first ever win. He's up to second. Hernandez, who lost his race last season on a last lap pass, going for third. And as mentioned, Hendricks drama with Keegan Thompson. He's up into the top five. Hunter is there for MB2. Atkins shuffled up by Hernandez. Richardson falls a lap down. Mathis Wells clears all traffic. Nine laps to go for the number 20. But he has some really hungry drivers behind Hernandez. Wants redemption from last season. Thompson wants Hendricks first. Here's Evan Hunter for MB2. He's up to third. Laura Chung in the number nine. Led a lot of laps at Pocono, but lost it late. Chung inside the top 10. Moving on Burnett. Nathan Baird is still up here. Jordan Stout trying to continue the momentum. Tim Gary and Justin Zidell, both from the state of Michigan. Can they get to victory lane? Evan stuck behind Zidell and Randall from the back of the field. Start 42nd. He's moving up to have a shot at the end. But they have to run down Mathis Wells with eight laps to go. And Wells has separated himself right here. Hernandez is second. Hunter is third. Thompson looking for third off two. But he might be better off pushing the 36. Trying to have a shot at those front two. Burnett gaining back in fifth. Might be five, six cars right here. Maybe even more if these guys don't battle back here. Kukulon trying to gain spots back after losing them on the restart. Three wide for third. Hunter clears it. Now Thompson under fire from Matthew Burnett. Seven laps to go for Mathis Wells. Hernandez sees Wells in the position he was in last season. And now Hernandez is in Brett Sierra's position. Chasing that race leader. Hunter still clearing third. The battle for fourth. Burnett, Chung, Thompson all stacked together as they race down the back straightaway back around the six laps to go at the line. So far it's a three car race, but if these three start to battle, watch out. 
Burnett clears in fourth. Thompson fifth. Bow for six. Stout with the aggressive run on the outside. Trying to get by Laura Chung. Baird and Gary right behind those two. Kukulon coming back. Going for a top ten. Trying to get by Justin Zidell. And they have Atkins. There you see Richardson's damage as he's trying to keep touch. Delella moving up nicely. Remember he fell back at the start. Just past Jay Brando. And Evans is falling back that 31. Led a lot of laps early on. Led the most laps in this race. But now dropping back out of a shot to win it. As we're coming back to five laps to go. Wells looking for back-to-back -back wins on the season. Hernandez looking for his second of the season in this number one car. And then if those two start battling, Evan Hunter, Matthew Burnett will be there. And then if it closes up even more, Thompson, Stout, and Chung will be there. Been a one. I just think with Hernandez, he needs help from behind. He needs someone close enough to him to give him even more draft. He's getting enough from Wells to gain a little every lap. But I think he needs more if he's going to want to have a realistic shot making this pass. He needs Hunter and Burnett to get up here, but the problem is I think the cars are faster than the 36, but they'll lose time if they pass him. Stout is passing people. Trying to get by Thompson for fifth. Hunter clears in third. Four laps to go for Mathis Wells, but Hernandez still closing the gap. And the distance between those two cars shrinking for sure. Off into turn one. Stout through to fifth. Chung for sixth on Keegan Thompson. Kukulai, remember, restarted first. He's getting back some spots, but time is running out. He's not going to have a shot for this race victory. Wells down the back into three and four to see three laps to go. Hunter still trying to fend off Matthew Burnett, but that 17 that got a great run this time might have that third spot. Three laps to go. Battle for third. Hunter has it. Burnett on the inside wants it. Off into turns one and two. Try and clear Hunter. If he doesn't, Hunter could hang up there and get some draft from behind and from in front. At the moment, it's a two-car race as they battle for third place. They're only slowing themselves down and allowing the front two to get more of a gap. Stout looking out three wide on Matthew Burnett. That's for third. Chung and Kukulon making a five car race for third. But with two laps to go, it's Mathis Wells versus Anthony Hernandez at the front of the field at Michigan. Last season, it was a last lap pass of Brett Sierra on Anthony Hernandez in turn three and four for the win. Will it be something similar but in reverse for Anthony Hernandez here today? Down the back straightaway, coming to see the white flag this time by. I think Wells, though, that car just looks strong enough out in front. Hernandez is trying to close in, but I don't know if the one car has enough pace. White flag is shown. One more time around in the Sirius Satellite Radio 400 for Mathis Wells. Joe Gibbs racing, looking for back-to-back -back wins on the season. Wells won at Pocono. Last race. He did it in thrilling fashion late in the going. Now a perfect restart for Mathis Wells. Gibbs now in front of Michigan and down the back straight away. He's a mile away from victory. We have mentioned on JRTV, could the floodgates open for Mathis Wells with that first victory of the season at Pocono? Well, it looks like they have. Back to back for Mathis Wells. He wins the Winston Cup Series at Michigan in 2002. That is great for Mathis Wells. I mean, this was a man at the start of the season had been very inconsistent. He had speed, but was just so inconsistent with it. Now I think they found the consistency with it. He's gotten top fives and top tens and now two straight victories. And he was fifth in points entering. I think he's going to be a little bit higher than that here leaving. Mathis Wells has established himself as a championship contender contender here this season with his second straight victory at Michigan. Wow. Pocono now Michigan. That is two high horsepower racetracks this number 20 car is one end. Field better watch out after this mid-season break because I have to think that this number 20 team, they're going to come out swinging going for another Joe Gibbs Racing Championship trying to revenge what uh, trying to avenge what Chris Jericho did last season. Jericho with his second straight poor finish to running well early on. And it's a teammate again, though. Mathis Wells stealing the glory right at the end. It was the last restart for Mathis Wells to get him out in front as he claims victory here at Michigan. 
Anthony Hernandez, so close for the second trade season. Second place once again for the number one. Matthew Burnett, a really good points day for him. Third place in the number 17. That will gain him greatly on his teammate, Keyshawn Richardson. Kukulon stopped some of the bleeding here today. A top five with fourth place. He was leading on the last leaf start, though. He might want that restart back. And Laura Chung, her second straight top five. That number 19 has found some speed as of late. Tim Gary puts two of the MB2 cars inside the top 10. As Gary gets sixth. Jordan Stout ends up in seventh. Then Evan Hunter, the other MB2 car in eighth. So really good day for both those drivers. Keegan Thompson, Hendrick's highest finisher in ninth. And Nathan Baird, really, really important day for him. He came in outside the top 35 in owner's points, but he might just leave inside the top 35 in owner's points a top 10 for the number 22. Justin Zidell is home track. Will have wanted a top 10 or a little bit better, but ends up in 11th. It's still a solid day as he showed speed here today. 12th place to Justin Atkins. Zach DeLello ends up in 13th. Lathan Strickland in 14th. And Evans, who dominated the early part of this race, has himself for 15th on that last restart. Eli Bright finished just behind him in 16th. Then you have Hunter Reed in 17th. Jay Randall from the back of the field, 42nd, but ends up in 18th. Jordan Edwards, a really good day for Fitz Bradshaw Racing, ends up in 19th. And Brett Sierra completes the top 20. Chris Jericho DeVal back there from the back of the field on the restart, but he only can get 22nd. Luke Rainey, his top 10 streak here at Michigan will break as he gets 24th. Anderson Reeves, a solid day in 26th. Jack Haas, 27th. Fitzwater down here, 28th. Never really had the speed here today. And a good run for Benny Lynn, the uh, second Jasper car. Gets a top 30 here today. Jack Carter, Jimmy Stammer Jr., just outside the top 30. The 35 cars finish on the lead lap. Baby Rose a lap down along with Keyshawn Richardson. Jason Albert at 41 had no speed here today. Oz going to lap down and then out from the crash. Mitchell Collins, Noah Clifton, and the number 19 of Nolan Lawrence. So crazy day at Michigan. And with Keyshawn Richardson finishing outside the top 30, the points have tightened up just a little bit. Evans led the most laps, so he got five points there. And finished inside the top 15. Burnett and Wells with really good days. Kukulon with a really good day. And... Those points, they've closed back up, so Richardson pulled out to a, no, a near 200-point gap, but it's come down, and now uh, you, you have to feel that those drivers behind Richardson, they have life again. Richardson had a really, really bad day, and the rest are going to try and capitalize on it, and as we go into the, uh, the off week here, what teams can find something over this one-week break to come out in the second half of the season swinging? Can Virtual Tools Racing find what they had at the beginning of the season? Can Roush continue to build on what they have? We know Joe Gibbs Racing has found some speed with Math as well as of late. Can Hendrick find what they're missing? We're going to find out in the second half of the season. As next time out on JRTV in two weeks' time, we'll go racing at the New Hampshire International Speedway for the New England 300. Always a very, very fun race there. And we'll see how, who, what team and what driver can start out the second half of the season swinging and maybe put themselves as the championship favorite in these final 16 races of the 2002 NASCAR Winston Cup Series season. But for the second straight week, it's Mathis Wells celebrating a victory lane in the Winston Cup Series as he claims victory in the Sirius Satellite Radio 400 at Michigan. Congratulations to that number 20 team. And see you guys in two weeks' time on JRTV for the 17th race of the season.